Jeff White, the former police liaison for Operation Rescue, is promoting a uh, documentary that uh, I guess Randall Terry, the former leader of Operation Rescue, is making called Dragon Slayer. And it's very, very good that they would document and promote what Operation Rescue did because they saved many thousands of unborn babies' lives by interposing their bodies. And as Jeff uh, says very often, and it is true, although hardly anyone knows it, that it was the numerically largest nonviolent civil disobedience movement in American history. Now, some might argue it was not nonviolent because they did physically interpose and do violence to the business of the abortion, abortionists and the abortion industry. They did actually physically interpose to stop it. And there is an inherent violence to that. But nonetheless, let's grant it was the largest, non larger than the civil rights movement to end uh, Jim Crow and segregation numerically. Well, why does everyone know about that? But relative to the people who know everything about that, because the federal government has promoted it, because they cast themselves as the hero in that story, just like the slavery abolition story, we all know about those. We all know about the Emancipation Proclamation. Why do relatively does relatively no one know about what technically was the largest nonviolent civil disobedience movement in American history by numbers when American Christians, and I grew up in it, I was part of it as a child in 1987, 88. And it affected me, affected the trajectory of my life. So why do does no one relative to those other movements and uh, abolition movements? Why does relatively no one is no one aware of it? Not only is it because the people who promoted those others, the civil rights movement, have been you know, firmly ensconced in the positions of power. But why did Operation Rescue not achieve anything like that so that we would all know this? They wouldn't even have to make a documentary because everyone would know this from their history books. Decades later, the reason is because even though they have the audacity to lie and call themselves dragon slayers, in reality, they were playing a game of chicken with a dragon, the federal government, and the backslidden apostate majority of Christians in America, and their unwillingness to sacrifice more. So that dragon won the game of chicken. The critical mass that Operation Rescue would have had to have achieved to have the right to be remembered in the history books, and they should be remembered, and the lessons should be learned, and the people who sacrificed time and treasure, and the people who were physically injured, like Deborah Grumbine, like other people who were physically injured, and a little tiny handful of people, Joan Andrews Bell, went on rescuing, giving up decades of her life, never stopped, even now, facing federal charges. For the most part, the thing was done by 1990, and yet Jeff White, to my face, when I worked with him, would say, oh no, oh no, we never stopped rescuing. That's a lie. Let me say it a second time. Jeff, that's a lie. The dragon was not slain. Now, another little offshoot T. Russell Hunter, Abolish Human Abortion, whose um, website says that it is an evil to use force to defend the preborn. Um, they have made a movie already, a really absurd, <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing even to mention it, with the pictures of T. Russell Hunter's face and Rusty Thomas's and the face 
oh, these great men in, in, in the name of Matt Truella, and these are the men that turned the world upside down. You see, whether it's the old farts like uh, Matt and uh, Jeff, and I'm getting to be an old fart uh, myself too, but they're quite a bit older, <laughs> um, and uh, Rusty, or the younger ones like Troy Newman and me, they're trying to claim some kind of a logical connection that doesn't exist between Operation Rescue or their actions and the fact that Donald J. Trump replaced by divine providence Justice Kennedy and then that wicked Jewess uh, Ginsburg and the majority that Rehnquist, Chief Justice Rehnquist, uh, tried to put together more than once, came very close, and Anthony Kennedy um, went to the other side. That majority that he tried very hard to assemble finally came together, due in no way logically to Operation Rescue or T. Russell Hunter. They'll have to. They'll have to um, posit such go out on such uh, spiritual uh, uh, fantastical uh, conjecture and limbs like to give the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Seventh-day Adventists a run for their money with their little cults where they try to claim things happened in heaven as they were waiting for the second coming and it didn't come. Well, that uh, those logical fallacies of those uh, cults are the same dynamic is in operation with the Operation Rescue cults. Their followers, they have a desperate need to see that their leaders have led them somewhere, and the leaders have a desperate need to demonstrate that they've led them somewhere in a jerk circle, a masturbation circle of mutual denial, and a circle of mutual affirmation, all built around a lie, disguised to cover up a horrible truth. And when you pin them on that horrible truth, they become furious. And I've seen it in the eyes of Jeff White. Jeff kept thinking he would work under the cover of his friends in the FBI and the federal government and be able to uh, stay under the radar with his Operation Brer Rabbit, going out, getting arrested to raise money. And then um, conning Obamacare. Not evil. It's good what Jeff was doing, but a bit foolhardy. And the dragon, which was not slain, Jeff, and you know it because it swallowed you. And you sat in federal prison because the dragon demonstrated his great power over you and the rules and who's running the show and who's the bitch, and who's doing the pitching, and who's doing the catching. And you know it, Jeff. And you've always had to try to, um, you know, pretend that the denial wasn't denial. Uh, when I would say Operation Rescue stopped rescuing, which a child could see, anyone uh, even loosely tethered to reality could tell that Operation Rescue stopped. For, aside from Joan Andrews Bell, and a few others, for all intents and purposes, they stopped. They stopped. But he would say, no, Jeff will say, no, we never stopped rescuing. We just changed tactics. That's a lie. Not only did you stop rescuing, it was a game of chicken. The dragon won. The dragon has put you and all of us, myself included, in its place, and we're grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit if we won't at least confess it. We're actually playing people into the dragon's hands by not confessing the failure and the slavery. And then Jeff, when I supported Neil Horsley as a secessionist from the 1990s until I met Jeff around 2002, for the next 15 years, he mocked me. And his mockery was very specific. It took on a very specific form. It's okay for uh, his friend, 
Troy Newman to call uh, Scott Roeder, who shot the most notorious late-term abortionist in American history, George Tiller, and stopped him the way we couldn't stop him. He stopped him. Troy, it's okay for Troy to call that man a coward, but it's not okay for us to criticize Operation Rescue and the circles that spun off of it as Troy Newman fought over the name Operation Rescue with Flip Benham and Rusty Thomas and Randall Terry, who's making a documentary now called Dragon Slayers. They're all fighting over the name Operation Rescue when nobody's rescuing anybody. And Jeff White says, oh, no, no, we never stopped rescuing. You're a liar. I love you enough to tell you. You're a liar. And the Holy Spirit has no part, the Spirit of Truth has no part with liars. We're bearing a false witness. We played chicken with the dragon. I was just a child. I witnessed it, though. I've been part of this for a long time. The Lord had me there to be a witness, and I can't keep my mouth shut now. You're lying. No dragon was slain. And Jeff, you mocked me for 15 years that I was uh, Pedro, the faithful sl slave Pedro for supporting Neil Horsley, saying we should organize to interpose and nullify the evil federal decrees when James Madison said so and the framers said so themselves in so many words that it was the responsibility of the states, the people in the states, to organize, to interpose when the federal government decrees evil. And James Madison used the word evil. And Jeff, you called me uh, over and over and over for those years. Oh, the faithful Pedro and Neil Horsley for advocating secession, nullification, interposition, like Matt Truella is now. And he's right about that, of the lesser magistrates. You said, oh, your Pedro and Neil is Don Quixote, and you mocked us. Oh, the faithful slave leading the horse, jousting at windmills. Until one day, a few years ago, you got really quiet, didn't you, Jeff? When I said, Jeff, you know, your mockery would hit home. But the reason it doesn't is because if the windmills, the Don Quixote and his faithful servant, Pedro, were jousting at, had been real dragons as they, in their delusional minds, or Don Quixote's delusional mind, Pedro enabling him, thought that they were and acted like they were, if they really had been dragons that were really eating people and not windmills, it would have been evil for people not to support them and organize to support them. So that the analogy that you used against me for the better part of 15 years, uh, Jeff, now you've plunged back into it by asking people to support this documentary. Of course, those sacrifices and Operation Res Rescue should be documented and drawn attention to, but it is punctuated by our failure, which we must confess and learn from. Just like any other criminal in jail must at a certain point lay aside denial. The people from uh, Chuck Colson's prison fellowship ministries, of which Neil Horsley was a director, they know this. You can't get anywhere with an inmate while he's still in denial. Well, we're caught. We didn't slay the dragon. The dragon's stronger than ever. Roe versus Wade was not reversed by Operation Rescue. That's delusional. It was not reversed by T. Russell Hunter and AHA. That's delusional. Like the Seventh-day Adventists and their prophecies, like the um, Jehovah's Witnesses and their long tradition of false prophecies and all their spin-off sects, they always come down to false prophecies and taking credit for uh, delusional ideas that, that have no, bear no uh, rational examination. In reality, I'll say it again, you didn't slay any dragon. And we are going to have to do the things that Neil Horsley was advocating we would have to do. The interposition, the nullification. We have to organize the lesser magistrates. We have to confess 
our failure to do so, that we have been spinning our wheels all this time, that this has been busy work, that we have been operating in a state of denial. Otherwise, the Lord is simply going to destroy all of us, along with the dragon, okay? And he's not going to be pleased with us. We're not going to hear the words, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Otherwise, if I'm wrong about this, Jeff, Randall, first of all, why did you mock Roy McMillan that he was delusional when you're the ones who are delusional? But maybe maybe if I'm wrong, Roy was an Operation Rescue leader who was saying what I'm saying. We're going to have to nullify it. We're going to have to organize a state or states to secede, to nullify, to interpose, to stop the dragon, the federal government. Well, now it's gone all over the world. World. I'm in Africa dealing with, um, because we couldn't criminalize porn in America, it's pouring into every, even children who don't have um, uh, electricity in their homes are imitating it. And teachers, I'm dealing with teachers who are catching seven and eight-year-olds buggering each other in the outhouse because of the porn pouring out of America. Um, 14-year-old brothers who are looking at it on their phones and um, imitating it, uh, legal porn, okay, not kitty porn, but they're imitating it with their little sisters. Their mothers are walking in, their busy mothers walking in on them, you know, with, with, with their, I, do I have to describe the scenario? They've taught their little sisters to fillet them, okay? I just heard it yesterday. It's still at the front of my mind. And it's our failure to restrain or destroy the dragon. We haven't slain the dragon. The dragon has us cowed. Otherwise, why is there a 22-year-old young woman named Lorna Roxanne Green who burned down a clinic in the state of Wyoming in Casper who drove at night because she was having bad dreams about dead little babies? She burned it down. As you say, Jeff, bricks don't bleed. Why isn't she in your fundraising letters? Why aren't we showing her face everywhere like like the, and I'm not saying they're good, but like the Irish Republic, a real movement, like the Irish Republican Army w was constantly going around petitions to release their prisoners. They weren't ashamed of them because we're cowed. You can't put her name in a fundraising letter. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, Troy Newman. Prove me wrong, T. Russell Hunter. Prove me wrong, Troy. You call Scott a coward. You can't put the name of Lorna Roxanne Green, innocent, beautiful girl, who's given up years of her life to save babies. You can't even mention her name in public. You call Scott Roeder a coward who did what you couldn't accomplish. You're the cowards. It came out of your mouth, Troy. You're the delusional one. Jeff, it came out of your mouth calling me Pedro. They were, they're real dragons. They're not dead. You can't even mention her name except in quiet and in private because of your donors. The same donors, Jeff and Cheryl Conrad, who told you to shut me up in Philadelphia when I was telling the abortionists at ACOG who were giving classes in innovations in abortion techniques. I told them, we're taking your face and we're taking your names. And when we reverse this, we're going to Hold trials, Nuremberg trials, crimes against humanity will prosecute you. And, you. and for that, you pulled, and that was on the front page of the Philadelphia Inquirer, and you pulled me into your office, you and Cheryl Conrad, Jeff, and you said the donors don't like it. You're on a lead. You're on a leash, like a bitch, to your donors and their degree of willingness to tolerate the truth, the reality of what would be required if we were serious. And you were hired all this time since Operation Rescue stopped. You were hired to maintain the pretense, to just ease people into the capitulation, to the, just pat them on the back. We're still rescuing. You can support us. It's a big fucking lie. You don't dare support. Lorna Roxanne Green. You don't dare. I dare you to. You fucking liars. I dare you to. Chapter 13. 
And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six.